Okay, tonight is the 25th of July, and this is the 10th night we are speaking on the Diga Nikaya Suttas. Tonight we come to an important sutta on dependent origination uh, called the uh, Mahanidana Sutta, Sutta number 15, Mahanidana Sutta. Thus have I heard. Once the Lord was staying among the Kurus, there is a market town there called Kama Sadhamma, and the Venerable Ananda came to the Lord, saluted him, sat down to one side, and said, It is wonderful, Lord, it is marvelous how profound this dependent origination is, and how profound it appears, and yet it appears to me as clear as clear. And the Buddha said, Do not say that, Ananda, do not say that. This dependent origination is profound and appears profound. It is through not understanding, not penetrating this Dhamma that this generation has become like a tangled ball of string, covered as with a blight, tangled like coarse grass, unable to pass beyond states of woe, the ill destiny, ruin, and the round of births and deaths. Stop here for a moment. Eh? So here, Venerable Ananda, at that time, was supposed to be a Sotapanna. And uh, he says, uh, dependent origination uh, is supposed to be profound. Uh, and yet, it appears to him uh, as clear as daylight. Uh, uh, but the Buddha said, don't say that. Uh, the Buddha said, uh, origination is, a pro is profound uh, and appears profound. Uh, why does the Buddha say uh, it is profound? Actually. Uh, in the suttas, we find uh, that even before uh, enlightenment, uh, the Buddha said uh, he, he, he considered uh, what is the cause of suffering. What is the cause of suffering means basically what's the cause of uh, being born, uh, aging, uh, sickening, and dying. Uh. And uh, when he considered like that, uh, then he he worked backwards, lah, then he realized uh, the cause was being born uh, because it's the nature of the world. Uh, once you are born into the world, uh, the world is a world of impermanence. Uh, everything must change. Lah. So you will grow old and become sick and die. Lah. Uh, similarly, he, he asked, what is the cause of birth? So he retraced the steps uh, and he understood basically lah, uh, dependent origination like uh, like what Venerable uh, Ananda understands. Lah. But to really understand dependent origination, uh, we find in the Vinaya books, lah, after the Buddha was enlightened, he uh, spent uh, the whole night uh, contemplating dependent or origination, uh, uh, how dependent origination uh, arises and how it ceases, lah, and how it arises and ceases. Lah. So he spent 12 hours the whole night, uh, from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m., uh, contemplating uh, dependent origination. Uh, and during that time, uh, he used his uh, uh, psychic powers probably uh, to look uh, uh, at how uh, beings uh, uh, arise and all these things. Uh, so having contemplated for 12 hours, uh, then he understood uh, that dependent origination is profound. Uh, but even if you have a basic understanding of dependent origination, like Venerable Ananda, you can be a Sotapanna, uh, an Arya. <clears throat> and the Buddha continued, If Ananda, you are asked, as aging and death a condition for its existence, you should answer yes. If asked, what conditions aging and death, you should answer, aging and death is conditioned by birth. What conditions birth, being, or becoming, or existence conditions birth? Clinging conditions being, craving conditions clinging or attachment, feeling conditions craving, contact conditions feeling, mentality and materiality, nama rupa, conditions contact, consciousness conditions <coughs> mentality and materiality, if asked, has consciousness a condition for its existence? You should answer yes. If asked, what conditions consciousness? You should answer, 
mentality and materiality conditions consciousness. Thus, Ananda, mentality and materiality conditions consciousness, and consciousness conditions mentality and materiality. Mentality and materiality conditions contact. Contact conditions feeling. Feeling conditions craving. Craving conditions clinging or attachment. Clinging conditions being or existence or becoming. Being conditions birth. Birth conditions aging and death. Sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and distress. Thus this whole mass of suffering comes into existence. Stop here for a moment. So here you see the Buddha talks about uh, ten links uh, of dependent origination of suffering. Normally you find in other suttas the Buddha talks about twelve links. Uh, but here you find the Buddha talks about tw- uh, ten. The two links that are left out here uh, is uh, Sankara, volition, uh, and uh, avijja, ignorance. Uh, so you have uh, ten here. La. Normally we chant the uh, chant on dependent origination. Uh, avijja, pachaya, sankara, sankara, pachaya, vinyanang, vinyana, pachaya, namarupang, namarupa, pachaya, salayatanang, salayatana. Pachaya, Paso, etc. Mm. So, it looks as like there's only nine, eh? not ten. Eh? Uh, even the Salayatana, the six sense bases, are not here. Eh? Uh, so, it looks like you can consider uh, this uh, dependent origination of suffering eh? by these nine links eh? instead of twelve. Eh? Uh, mm, further on okay we continue and see yeah? mm. I have said birth conditions aging and death and this is the way that should be understood if Ananda there were no birth at all anywhere of anybody or anything of devas to the deva state of Gandabas, of yakas, of ghosts, of humans, of quadrupeds, of birds, of reptiles to the reptile state. If there were absolutely no birth at, at all of all these beings, then with the absence of all birth, the cessation of birth, could aging and death appear? No, Lord. Therefore, Ananda, just this is the root, the cause, the origin, the condition for aging and death, namely birth. I have said, being conditions birth. If there were absolutely no being uh, or, be, or, or existence uh, in the world of sense desires of form uh, or the formless world, could birth appear? No, Lord. Therefore, just this is the condition for, of birth, namely being. Clinging conditions being. If there were absolutely no clinging, sensuous clinging, clinging to views, to rules and rituals, to, to identity view, could being appear? Craving conditions clinging. If there were absolutely no craving for sight, sound, smell, taste, tangibles, mind, objects, could clinging appear? Feeling conditions craving. If there were absolutely no feeling, feeling born of eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, mind contact. In the absence of all feeling, with the cessation of feeling, could craving appear? No, Lord. Therefore, Ananda, just this is the root, the cause, the origin, the condition for craving, namely feeling. And so, Ananda, feeling conditions craving, craving conditions seeking, seeking conditions acquisition, acquisition conditions decision making, decision making conditions lustful desire, lustful desire conditions attachment, attachment conditions appropriation, appropriation conditions avarice, avarice conditions guarding of possessions. And because of the guarding of possessions, there arise the taking up of stick and sword, quarrels, disputes, arguments, strife, abuse, lying, and other unskilled states. Uh, Stop here for a moment. So here the Buddha 
makes us understand how biological thinking uh, he could uh, untangle these uh, conditions uh, of dependent origination of suffering. Uh. And then, uh, so at the bottom, the Buddha says, uh, feeling conditions craving, craving conditions seeking, seeking is pariyesana, uh, and seeking conditions acquisition, laba. Acquisition conditions decision making, vinichaya. Decision making conditions lustful desire, chandaraga. Lustful desire conditions attachment, ajosana. Attachment conditions appropriation, parigaha. Appropriation conditions avarice, macharya. Avarice conditions guarding of possessions, araka. Uh, so, because of that, uh, uh, to protect your possessions, uh, then you take up the stick and sword and quarrels and disputes, arguments, strife, abuse, lying and other unskillful states arise. Uh. I have said, all these evil unskilled states arise because of the guarding of possessions. For if there were absolutely no guarding of possessions, would there be the taking up of stick or sword, quarrels, disputes, etc.? No law. Therefore, Ananda, the guarding of possessions is the root, the cause, the origin, the condition for all these evil and skilled states. I have said, Everest conditions the guarding of possessions, etc. Appropriation conditions Everest. Attachment conditions appropriation. Lustful desire conditions attachment. Decision making conditions lustful desire. Acquisition conditions decision making. Seeking conditions acquisition. I have said craving conditions seeking. If there were no craving, would there be any seeking? No, Lord. Therefore, Ananda, craving is the root, the cause, the origin, the condition for all seeking. Thus, these two th things become united in one by feeling. <coughs> Stop here for a moment. Huh? How do these two things? Uh, become united in one by feeling. Because of feeling, uh, craving arises. La. And because of craving, why craving arises? Because of pleasant feeling. La. Feeling here refers to pleasant feeling. Huh? When you have uh, unpleasant feeling, uh, then you feel uh, repulse, la, aversion. La. But when you have pleasant feeling, uh, whether because of sights or sounds or smells or taste or touch or thoughts, uh, then uh, you, there's a tendency uh, to crave for it, uh, to want it again and again. Uh, and that condition seeking, uh, etc. Uh. I have said, contact conditions feeling. Therefore, contact is the root, the cause, the origin, the condition for feeling. Mentality and materiality conditions contact. But whatever properties, features, signs or indications, the mind factor is conceived of uh, this is na mind factor is nama kaya or mentality body like you can see the mentality body is conceived of would there in the absence of such properties uh, uh, features signs or indications pertaining to the mentality body would there manifest any grasping at the idea of the materiality body? No, Lord. Or in the absence of any such properties, um, features, signs, or indications pertaining to the materiality body, would there be any grasping at uh, sensory reaction? Uh, on the part of the mentality body. No, Lord. Uh, stop here for a moment. Uh, uh, the mind had is conceived of. So here is saying uh, whether it is the uh, mentality body, uh, that means a uh, a mental factor, la, something occurring in the mind, la, or the materiality body la, uh, outside. La. Outside means a materiality body can refer to form, 
can refer to sounds lah. Sounds also is uh, uh, part of the materiality lah. And smells, uh, taste, and touch lah. Uh, so these five senses uh, 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 refers to the rupa, rupa kaya lah. Uh, so whether it's uh, the um, because of uh, pleasant uh, forms or uh, sound, sight, smell, taste, touch, uh, and the mental part, uh, the uh, anything in the thoughts, uh, then would there be any grasping? Uh, then is, uh, because a sensory reaction here occurs when a sense object uh, uh, impinges on the sense base, uh, meaning uh, form or sound or sights or smells, smells, taste, touch, uh, impinges on the sense base, uh, uh, eye, ear, nose, etc. Mm. So, by whatever properties the men materiality body and the mentality body are designated in their absence is there manifested any grasping at the idea or at sensory reaction no lord by whatever properties features signs or indications the mentality body is conceived of in the absence of these is there any contact to be found no lord then ananda just this namely mentality and materiality is the root the cause the origin the condition for all contact i have said condition consciousness conditions mentality and materiality if consciousness were not to come into the mother's womb would mentality and materiality develop there no lord or if consciousness having entered the mother's womb were to be deflected would and mentality and materiality come to birth in this life no lord and if the consciousness of such a tender young being boy or girl were thus cut off would mentality and materiality grow develop and mature no lord therefore ananda just this namely consciousness is the root the cause the origin the condition of mentality and materiality stop here for a moment for a uh, uh, a fetus uh, in the mother's womb uh, to grow, uh, consciousness must come into it. Uh. In other words, the being to be born uh, goes into the womb, uh, and uh, the egg, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, consciousness develops in that egg, uh, that fetus, uh, and then from there, uh, the uh, mentality and materiality uh, of that fetus will grow. Uh, that, that, uh, so, uh, the other thing uh, you must bear in mind is mentality and materiality uh, uh, and consciousness uh, uh, are counterpart. Uh, they always come together and they cease together. Uh, when there is consciousness, mentality and materiality uh, must come, must, must be present. Uh, and when there's no consciousness, there's no mentality and materiality. Uh, Mentality and materiality uh, are the objects of consciousness, uh, so must always come together with consciousness. I have said, mentality and materiality conditions consciousness. If consciousness did not find a resting place in mentality and material materiality, would there subsequently be an arising and coming to be of birth, aging, death and suffering? No, Lord. Therefore, Ananda, just this, namely, Mentality and materiality is the root, the cause, the condition of consciousness. Thus far then, Ananda, we can trace birth and decay, death and falling into other states and being reborn. Thus far extends the way of designation of concepts. Thus far is the sphere of understanding. Thus far the round goes as far as can be discerned in this life, namely to mentality and materiality together with consciousness. In what ways, Ananda, do people explain the nature of the self? Some declare the self to be material and limited, saying, Myself is material and limited. Some declare to be material and unlimited, 
Some declare it to be immaterial and limited. Some declare it to be immaterial and unlimited, saying myself is immaterial and unlimited. Whoever declares the self to be material and limited considers it to be so either now or in the next world, thinking, though it is not so now, I shall acquire it there. That being so, that is all we need say about the view that the self is material and limited. And the same applies to the other theories. So much ananda for those who proffer an explanation of the self. How is it with those who do not explain the nature of the self? Etc., etc., uh, as in verses 23 and 24, uh, but negated. Uh, in what ways, Ananda, do people regard the self? They equate the self with feeling. Feeling is myself, or feeling is not myself. Myself is impercipient. Feeling is not myself, but myself is not impercipient. It is of a nature to feel. Now, Ananda, one who says, feeling is myself, should be told, there are three kinds of feeling, friend, pleasant, painful, and neutral. Which of the three do you consider to be yourself? When the pleasant feeling is felt, no painful or neutral feeling is felt, but only pleasant feeling. When a painful feeling is felt, no pleasant or neutral feeling is felt, but only painful feeling. And when a neutral feeling is felt, no pleasant or painful feeling is felt, only neutral feeling. Pleasant feeling is impermanent, conditioned, dependently arisen, bound to decay, to vanish, to fade away, to cease. So too are painful feeling and neutral feeling. So anyone who on experiencing a pleasant feeling thinks, this is myself, must at the cessation of that pleasant feeling think, myself has gone. And the same with painful and neutral feelings. Thus whoever thinks, feeling is myself, is contemplating something in this present life that is impermanent, a mixture of happiness and unhappiness, subject to arising and passing away. Therefore, it is not fitting to maintain feeling is myself. Stop here for a moment. Uh. This uh, self, uh, atta, uh, refers to something uh, that, you, that is uh, there all the time. Uh. If it appears and disappears, uh, it cannot be the self. Uh. Uh, the concept of the self, uh, or the Indian concept of the self, uh, is something that is permanent and which you can I identify uh, as myself. Uh, and it's always there. Uh. If, it's, if you say feeling is yourself, uh, one moment feeling is there, another moment feeling is not there, uh, then when feeling has disappeared, uh, then where is yourself? Uh, so, uh, you must remember, uh, this, uh, this is the concept of the self. So when the, when the Buddha talks about anatta, no self, uh, and talks about uh, emptiness, sunyata, uh, it does not mean that there is nothing. What it means is that there is nothing permanent. Uh, if there is something permanent, then you can identify that with yourself. Uh, but because there is nothing in the world that is permanent, uh, so there is nothing in the world uh, that is self. Uh, but anyone who says, feeling is not myself, myself is impercipient, should be asked. If, friend, no feelings at all were to be experienced, would there be the thought, I am? To which he would have to reply, no, Lord. Therefore, it is not fitting to maintain, fit, feeling is not myself, myself is impercipient. Or anyone who says, feeling is not myself, but myself is not impercipient. My nature, myself is of a nature to feel, should be asked. Well, friend, if all feelings absolutely and totally ceased, could there be the thought, I am this, as yes, I am this feeling, to which he would have to reply, no, Lord. Therefore, it is not fitting to maintain. Feeling is not myself, but myself is not impercipient. Myself is of a nature to feel. From the time Ananda, when a monk no longer regards feeling as the self, or the self as being impercipient, or as being percipient and of a nature to feel, by not so regarding, he clings to nothing in the world. Not clinging, he is not excited by anything, and not being excited, he gains personal liberation, and he knows birth is finished, the holy life has been led, done was what had to be done, there is nothing more here. So stop here for a moment. Uh. So here the Buddha is saying uh, that some people say uh, they have no, uh, they have feeling. Uh, but if they have feeling, then uh, 
uh, when the feeling has disappeared, uh, then uh, where is the self gone? Uh, or if he says there's no feeling, uh, so the Buddha says, if you say there's no feeling, uh, how come you have a self? Uh, uh, so, So if he uh, understands uh, that uh, uh, feeling is not the self, uh, but the self, uh, uh, has a nature to feel, uh, but it is, but that is, uh, um, by not regarding uh, the the feeling uh, to be the self. Uh, then, then uh, he does not cling to feeling. La. Uh, feeling is 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 the cause uh, of clinging. La, because when when pleasant feelings arise, uh, so uh, it's only because we identify ourselves with f feelings uh, uh, that we attach to feelings. La. So uh, when pleasant feeling arises, uh, we tend to. Uh, crave for it uh, and want it again and again uh, and craving gives rise to attachment which gives rise to being uh, but uh, if we recognize uh, that uh, uh, feeling is not the self uh, uh, or belonging to the self uh, that feeling is impermanent uh, and whatever feelings arise uh, we don't attach to it uh, and if we don't attach to feelings uh, then there's nothing in the world we can we, we, we attach to uh, because all the things in the world that we attach to uh, is basically because it gives us pleasant feeling. Uh, so when you are not attached to anything, uh, then you are not excited by anything. Uh, then only uh, the, uh, the mind is equanim equanimous, uh, then you can attain liberation. And if anyone were to say to a monk whose mind was thus freed, the Tathagata exists after death, that would be seen by him as a wrong opinion and unfitting. Likewise, the Tathagata does not exist. Both exist and does not exist. Neither exists nor does not exist after death. Why so? As far, Nanda, as designation and the range of designation reaches, as far as language and the range of language reaches, as far as concepts and the range of concepts reaches, as far as understanding and the range of understanding reaches, as far as the cycle reaches and revolves, that monk is liberated from all that by the higher knowledges, la. super knowledge is abhinya. La. And to maintain that such a liberated monk does not know and see would be a wrong view and incorrect. So as we mentioned before, uh, uh, when a monk knows and sees, uh, then he does not have opinions uh, because he, he knows. Uh, uh. Ananda, there are seven stations of consciousness and two realms. Which are the seven? There are beings different in body and different in perception, such as human beings, some devas and some in states of woe. That is the first station of consciousness. There are beings different in body and alike in perception, such as the devas of Brahma's retinue, born there on account of having attained the first jhana. That is the second station. There are beings alike in body and different in perception, such as the abhasara devas. That is the third station. There are beings alike in body and alike in perception, such as the Subhakina Devas. That is the fourth station. There are beings who have completely transcended all perception of matter by the vanishing of the perception of sense reactions and by non-attention to the perception of a variety. Thinking space is infinite. They have attained to the sphere of infinite space. That is the fifth station. There are beings who, by transcending the sphere of infinite space, thinking consciousness is infinite, have attained to the sphere of infinite consciousness. That is the sixth station. There are beings who, having transcended the sphere of infinite consciousness, thinking there is no thing, have attained the sphere of no thingness. That is the seventh station. The two realms are the realm of unconscious beings and secondly, the realm of neither perception nor non-perception. Now, Ananda, as regards this first station,
consciousness with difference of body and difference of perception as in the case of human beings and so on if anyone were to understand it its origin its cessation its attraction and its peril and the deliv deliverance from it would it be fitting for him to take pleasure in it no lord and as regards the other stations and the two spheres likewise no lord ananda in so far as among have been known as they really are these seven stations of consciousness and these two spheres their origin and cessation their attraction and peril is freed without attachment that monk ananda is called one who is liberated by wisdom stop here for a moment uh. so here the buddha talking about seven stations of consciousness la first one is different in body and different in perception second is different in body and alike in perception third is alike in body and different in perception the fourth is alike in body and alike in perception the fifth is attained to the sphere of infinite space the sixth is attained to the sphere of infinite consciousness seven is attained to the sphere of no thingness and then the two realms are realm of unconscious beings and uh, neither perception nor non perception there are ananda these eight liberations what are they possessing form one sees forms that is the first liberation not to <clears throat> not perceiving material forms in oneself one sees them outside this is the second liberation three thinking it is beautiful one becomes intent on it that is the third four by completely transcending all perceptions of matter by the vanishing of the perception of sense reactions and by non attention to the perception of variety thinking space is infinite one enters and abides in the sphere of infinite space that is the fourth five by transcending the sphere of infinite space thinking consciousness is infinite one enters and abides in the sphere of infinite consciousness that is the fifth six by transcending the sphere of infinite consciousness thinking there is no thing one enters and abides in the sphere of no thingness that is the six by transcending is seven by transcending the sphere of no thingness one reaches and abides in the sphere of neither perception nor non perception that is the seven eight by transcending the sphere of neither perception nor non perception one enters and abides in the cessation of perception and feeling that is the eighth liberation ananda when once a monk attains these eight liberations in forward order in reverse order and in forward and reverse order entering them and emerging from them as and when and for as long as he wishes and has gained by his own super knowledge here and now both the destruction of the corrupt of the asavas and the uncorrupted liberation by mind and liberation by wisdom that monk is called both ways liberated and ananda there is no other way of both ways liberation that is more excellent or perfect than this thus the lord spoke and the venerable ananda rejoiced and was delighted by his words so this uh, eight liberations uh, refers to these eight things lah uh one uh, seeing forms uh, number two lah uh sees forms outside lah uh the third one is uh meditation on the beautiful lah like a beautiful color and then the fourth fifth sixth seventh uh refers to uh the arupas lah or arupa jhanas lah and the eighth refers to cessation of perception and feeling lah so sometimes there are some arahants ah uh, they have not attained the eight liberations lah and the uh, later books uh, they they say uh, uh, that those arahants are wisdom liberated lah and that they uh, if they have not attained the eight liberations uh, it means uh, they have not attained any jhana lah but that is not true lah because here uh, there's no mention of the four uh, rupa jhanas lah the four form jhanas lah uh -huh. so he only mentions the four formless jhanas uh, and cessation uh, and the first three uh, refers to uh, seeing forms uh, and uh, this might be referring to seeing forms inside uh, then the second one refers to seeing forms outside uh, and the third one is meditation on the beautiful uh, beautiful object uh, like a beautiful color uh, uh. so there's nothing here about the rupa jhana there are some monks uh, 
who attain the four rupa jhanas uh, and become liberated. Uh. But they have no psychic power. So because they have no psychic powers, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't have the first liberation. Uh, they don't see forms inside. They don't have the second uh, see forms outside. And they don't meditate on a beautiful color or something like that. Uh, because they might be meditating on their breath. Uh, uh. And also all the, the others, uh, they don't have the four arupas uh, or arupa jhanas. And they also don't have cessation of perception and feeling. Uh, and yet because they have the four jhanas, uh, they can become an arahan. Uh. So it is a, a misconception uh, to think uh, if, a, if a person has not attained the eight liberations uh, that he does not have the four rupa jhanas. Uh. Uh. So now I want to come back uh, to the... Uh, explanation uh, of the links of dependent origination. Uh, uh, actually, the links of dependent origination uh, uh, in um, other suttas, uh, especially the Nidana Sangyutta uh, of the Sangyutta Nikaya, uh, there are many suttas there concerning dependent origination. Uh, and uh, Later books uh, like the Abhidhamma and the um, commentaries, uh, they talk about dependent origination of suffering uh, in terms of three lifetimes. Uh, and uh, I think that is wrong uh, because uh, when they talk about three lifetimes, they talk about um, the first two, uh, uh, namely uh, ignorance. Uh, uh, which conditions uh, uh, sankara? They say that uh, because of igno ignorance in the past life, uh, in your past life, uh, sankara they say is uh, creating karma. Uh, so because of creating karma, uh, and then uh, the third link is consciousness. Uh, so in this life, uh, you are born. Uh, they say. Uh, uh, and then uh, once you are born, uh, then you have uh, mentality, materiality, then you have uh, six sense basis, and then you have contact at the six sense basis, then you have feelings, and then you have uh, uh, feelings, condition, uh, uh, craving, and craving conditions, attachment, and uh, 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 attachment uh, conditions, uh, uh, becoming. Uh, so they say uh, after that uh, you have birth in the future life. Uh, so they talk about three lifetimes. Uh, but it's not necessary uh, because uh, uh, when they explain like this uh, in terms of three lifetimes, uh, they talk about uh, uh, rebirth consciousness uh, and the uh, uh, dying consciousness, uh, the last uh, consciousness. Uh, and then the relinking consciousness. La. But then uh, uh, that gives the impression as though consciousness is continuous la, for your lifetime. Actually, in the Buddha's teachings, uh, consciousness is uh, arising and passing away extremely fast. La. I think it's faster than the arising and passing away of consciousness. La. Uh, so in one second, uh, you might have, I don't know how many uh, times consciousness arises and passes away, la, but uh, extremely a great number of times, uh, maybe hundreds of times or thousands of times, uh, even in one second. Mm. So because it arises and passes away so fast, uh, we think it's continuous. La. It gives us the impression, for example, you see something, uh, you think it's there all the time, la, but actually your consciousness uh, sees and then dies away. And then you might hear a sound, and then your consciousness, seeing consciousness arises and passes away and then arises again and passes away. So you think you're seeing all the time, but actually it's not. Uh, so, um, this uh, we don't need to talk about the past life. We don't need to talk about future life. Uh, it is enough uh, to see origin, uh, dependent origination in one lifetime. Uh, and so here, uh, this uh, Mahanidana Sutta, uh, you find uh, they don't talk about ignorance in the past life. They don't talk about creating karma in the past life. Uh, so that is already eliminated the past already. Uh, so, uh, so actually, uh, it is because of, uh, if you talk in terms of one lifetime uh, and you use 12 links, uh, it's because of ignorance in this present lifetime. Uh, that we have sankara. Ignorance uh, refers to ignorance of the Dhamma. 
uh, ignorance of suffering, uh, uh, ignorance of impermanence in the world, uh, ignorance of non-self or no self. Uh, so because of ignorance, uh, 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 in ignorance conditions sankara, which is volition. Uh, volition is the will to live, uh, basically. And in uh, dependent origination, uh, uh, sankara, uh, there are three sankaras uh, under sankara. Uh, kaya sankara, vachi sankara, and citta sankara. Uh, but there is, another, there is another set of sankara uh, in the suttas. Uh, uh, it's almost similar. It is Kaya Sankara, Vachi Sankara, and Mano Sankara. When you have Mano Sankara, then it is a creation of Kama. Uh, there are certain suttas in the five Nikayas. Uh, you find uh, when they talk about one set of Sankaras and when they talk about the other set. Uh, so this set uh, concerning dependent origination, uh, uh, the uh, body Sankara, verbal Sankara, and mental sankara refers uh, independent origination. Uh, they always talk about kaya sankara, vachi sankara, and citta sankara. Uh, this refers to the will, uh, to the will to live. Uh, because of the will to live, uh, because of the will to function, uh, sankara is basically volition. Because we want to function, uh, we want to exist uh, through the body to the speech and to the mind. So uh, we have these three sankaras. La. Because of body sankara, we want to function or uh, live uh, or exist uh, by body. Uh, so we breathe. La. So kaya sankara refers to breathing. La. Uh, and then vachi sankara uh, refers to uh, uh, thinking. La. Uh, because you must have uh, thought first uh, before you can break into speech. La. So if you want to speak, uh, first you must think. La. Uh, so that's why Vachi Sankara is thinking. La. And then uh, Chitta sank Sankara uh, is feeling and perception. Uh, the mind must start working first. La. Uh, then only uh, your mind uh, can uh, exist. La. Uh, so uh, it is not like the other one. La. The other one is uh, Mano, uh, is referring to uh, this uh, creation of karma. La. So because of the will to live, uh, uh, Chankara conditions consciousness. La. Uh, here we have consciousness. La. Consciousness refers to uh, the consciousness of a being. La. Uh, and once you have consciousness, uh, then you have uh, the object of consciousness, la, the counterpart of consciousness, which is nama rupa, mentality and materiality. La. And because of these two, uh, you also have the six sense basis, la, because consciousness uh, must lodge itself uh, at the, uh, in the body uh, with the six sense basis. La, uh. So uh, the six sense basis come next. La, uh. And then, the, because of the six sense basis, uh, you have contact at the six sense basis, la basa. Uh, and then, contact at the six sense basis uh, gives rise to feeling, la, uh, gives rise to feeling. And when you have uh, unpleasant feeling, uh, you you think you are suffering, la. When you have pleasant feeling, uh, you think you are enjoying life, la. Uh, So. Uh, because we want to enjoy life, uh, we keep chasing after pleasant feeling. Uh, so we, you find the world, uh, if you can market anything, uh, you can sell anything uh, which gives people pleasant feelings, uh, people will buy, uh, whether it's through the sights or through the sounds or through the smells, taste, touch, uh, uh, people will buy. Uh, uh, even through the mind, uh, like nowadays, uh, people sell uh, computer games. Uh, People play computer games uh, just to amuse the mind. Uh, so forms means uh, 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 seeing beautiful forms. Uh, uh, that's why we like to. Everybody likes to make up. Uh, like to uh, to look attractive. Uh. And then sounds uh, like nowadays you have a lot of rock bands. Uh, 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 we were just talking this just now uh, with uh, Kevin about Justin Bieber <laughs> being very popular <laughs> with the young girls. Uh, so uh, if you can make nice uh, sounds, uh, people want uh, and then uh, smells. Uh, uh, people sell perfumes uh, 
and then uh, taste lah, taste lah. Everybody wants to eat good food lah. And then touch lah. <coughs> touch is basically, basically uh, sex and all these things lah. Uh, so uh, because of uh, uh, pleasant feelings, uh, craving arises lah. The Buddha says uh, uh, this uh, 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 this uh, this uh, sights, sounds, smells, taste, and touch, uh, which gives rise to pleasant feelings. Uh, gives uh, there's always an underlying tendency uh, to crave for it lah. You want it again and again. Uh. Once you you experience something that gives you pleasant feeling. Uh, then uh, when you when you uh, don't have it, uh, the memory uh, makes you crave for it. Uh, attach uh, that is uh, called attachment. Uh, so uh, craving gives rise to attachment, uh, and because of attachment, uh, being comes uh, arises. Uh, this being, uh, uh, although he always talks about the uh, sensual desire beings, form beings, and formless beings, uh, it is the uh, the concept I am uh, once you attach to something uh, that I arises uh, for example uh, a, a baby uh, when a baby is born uh, it does not have much of a notion of the self you know. uh, but you give it something uh, like ice cream or or chocolate or something, uh, and it, 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 then he he craves for it as a result, uh, and uh, and uh, as attached to it, uh, then the self arises. Uh. So as we grow older, uh, you find uh, most people in the world, uh, we, as you gather more and more property, more wealth, and all that, uh, the ego becomes bigger and bigger. Uh. So uh, so that is being uh, the the the. Uh, the, the the feeling that I exist uh, that I am uh, so this being uh, uh, once you have the I am uh, then uh, you realize uh, you have been born into the world uh, that gives rise to birth uh, uh, you, you you just uh, you, you just uh, know uh, that in this lifetime you you had come into being uh, you, had, you were born from your mother's womb although you uh, did not uh, don't remember uh, and yet uh, you know uh, that you were born and then from birth uh, uh, you you identify yourself with the body uh, and then uh, there is aging uh, as the body ages you think I age uh, when the body becomes sick you think I am sick uh, when the body dies you think I die uh, and all the different types of uh, suffering uh, sorrow Lamentation, pain, grief, and despair, all this. Uh, uh, so that is basically uh, the 12 links of dependent origination. Uh, here it does not explain very much. Uh, that's why I always say, uh, uh, one sutta, uh, you cannot get much. Uh, you have to study many suttas to understand. Uh, that's why I like to understand dependent origination. Uh, you have to study the many suttas uh, in the Nidana chapter uh, of the Sangyutta Nikaya. Uh, just as to understand Satipatthana, you don't understand Satipatthana just by reading one Satipatthana Sutta. You have to uh, study the many suttas uh, under the Satipatthana chapter uh, of the Sangyutta Nikaya. Uh, so, I think uh, that's all I want to say here for now. Uh, you probably have some questions uh, we can discuss. You mean have no six senses? You cannot have no six senses. Ah yes. So the uh, trick uh, is not not to have no uh, six senses, but uh, to be very observant of the feelings that arise. Uh, and don't allow the feelings to carry you away. No? So if you understand that feelings are impermanent, that whatever pleasant feelings you feel, no? if you attach to it, no? there's a danger. The danger is that no? uh, you, you, you attach to it and when, uh, when it goes away, no? because in this world everything is impermanent, uh, it is uh, only there for some time. 
So when it goes away, you're going to suffer, la. you're going to uh, have a lot of grief. La. So if you're understanding that, uh, understanding especially the impermanence of the world, uh, then uh, even uh, when you enjoy something, you can enjoy, but uh, not to be over-attached to it, uh, then you won't suffer. So these twelve links of dependent origination of suffering, uh, we can only uh, break the link uh, at feeling. Mm. Only at feeling. <clears throat> we have to understand uh, that feeling is the cause of all suffering. Um, we read from uh, page 226 that um, there's a way This uh, consciousness uh, in the suttas, in the Majjhima Nikaya, the Buddha called it Gandhava. Gandhava. And uh, in other later books, uh, they call it intermediate body. It's a temporary body. La. And in Chinese books, they call it Chongyin Sen. Mm. So there is a body, but it is a temporary body. La. Mm. No, definitely not, because it's only, it exists for a very short time, so the Buddha does not classify it. But it's as real as any of the five realms. La. Sometimes I, I, I meet uh, people na, who, are, who study the Abhidhamma and their way of thinking is the Abhidhamma, and they cannot accept this. Uh, they say that it's, uh, basically, they, they say that it's a soul. La. It is a soul, but uh, the soul in Buddhism and the soul in other religions like Christianity is different. In Buddhism, any being itself is impermanent. So even the soul also is impermanent. Right? Mm. So in, in the Abhidhamma uh, uh, books, uh, the thinking is that when a being dies, uh, the consciousness stops here. And then the consciousness starts somewhere else. There's nothing that travels from here to there. That's the Abhidhamma uh, concept. Mm. But in the suttas, we find uh, the Buddha says uh, that uh, uh, if a being is to be reborn into the womb, uh, then this being uh, enters the womb. Uh -huh. uh, it's very different. Also, if a being is to be reborn in hell, uh, in the suttas it says uh, the hell beings come up and drag him down to hell. So what do they drag? He's not yet in hell. They drag that soul. Uh. That soul is the intermediate body. You know? uh, and it goes down to, to hell. No? Mm -hmm. That's why like in, 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 in Chinese uh, belief, uh, this Ngao Tao Ma Min, Gu Tao Be Bin, namely uh, uh, horse face, uh, and horse face and buffalo head. Nah. <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people nah, uh, don't believe nah, in things they have not seen. Nah. For example, a lot of people don't believe in ghosts. A lot of people don't believe in. Uh, 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 three spirits. Uh, mm. But I have a supporter who says uh, that a uh, few days before the father passed away, uh, as he was uh, eating dinner, he saw the horse face and buffalo head uh, waiting outside the window. Uh, that's end here. Mm. <laughs> 